Hey gang, there are fewer things I regret more than not investing in Zoom when I had the chance. How was I supposed to know there was going to be a pandemic and Zoom stocks would explode? Looking back 20 years from now, I don't want to have the same sinking feeling sitting on the sidelines knowing I could have jumped on another bandwagon sooner. Luckily, we know what the next big boom in retail automotive is, and that's why companies like Fortellus have provided the tools to create unique apps that will help your dealership meet the demands of the market. You see, no two dealers operate the same way. The beauty about Fortellus is that you can pick and choose the apps and workflows that help you meet the demands of the market while catering to your operations. Not only has Fortellus created an amazing technology platform that's designed to make life easier for dealers, they are pouring back into the community with events like their Dealer Dev Day. It's a three-day event that empowers attendees to network with each other to create smarter, faster, and better apps for the dealer community. So, my beloved DPB gang, the best thing that you can do right now is visit the Fortellus Marketplace and browse through their growing library of apps and integrations that will allow you to run your business your way. Visit Fortellus.io to learn more. That's Fortellus.io. Too often we rush through this hiring process. We think a body is better than nobody. But really, we're trying to get through to that right individual who not only sees a fit with the company, but that the company sees a fit with. And what you just touched on, like giving them an opportunity, giving the candidate an opportunity to experience the culture, to experience their potential teammates, to ask them questions, is a huge testament to demonstrating transparency in my mind because I can have a job posting all day, every day that says great culture, great experiences. We have fun. We, this, we, that, but who better to sell that into reality than the people they're going to be working with every day? Because let's be honest, we know employees talk to each other. If they're burdened by something, they're going to verbalize it to their coworkers. If they're, you know, if they're happy, they're also going to verbalize it. Um, so I think that's so tremendous. Is that something that you um, put would put in a job post? Like, hey, this this is what the process looks like if you want to come work with us or when you apply. So that, great. Thank you for asking that, because let's go back upstream a little bit. You know, we're, we're kind of in the middle of the process. I think hiring begins even at the division the level for a company to decide the, the kind of people that that the company wants to attract. And then that moves in terms of how you're going to phrase the, the text in the recruiting ad. You know, if you want to use the term sales ninja, you're going to get a different kind of candidate than, than what we use, which would be something like, you know, there's no experience required. We invite people who have an interest in sales to, to check us out. So, so the language of the recruiting ad has, has, you know, a significant impact on, on how you're communicating with people. And just to go down a quick rabbit hole, I think in so many cases, businesses forget that the candidates are really big part of the hiring process. Like it's just not all about us. We need to make sure the hiring process is designed to make the candidate a partner along with us. Because we really, as I mentioned before, those, those departures, I don't want someone that's going to stay with us six months. We try to hire to retire. So we want to find people that, that are going to help us weed themselves out if they're not right. Right. And, and we can only see so much over the course of three interviews and some interactions via email and phone calls in between. We need the candidate to, to really understand what they're coming into so that they can help us, you know, make a good decision. So, so to come back out of that rabbit hole, let's go back to the, the process itself. After we run that ad, and um, I should mention, we use... Uh, the text of our ads is on my website, jeffmoral.com. So if, if you have listeners that are interested in seeing the way we write our ads, then, then you know, it's all, all free and available there. But we, we invite applicants to email a cover letter and a resume. And we're much more interested in the cover letter than we are in the resume. Mm. And it's not that we don't care what they've done because it's relevant, but the cover letter is the opportunity for a candidate to 
distinguish him or herself. And, and if he or she doesn't even attach a cover letter, and that, that's a pretty powerful statement that they didn't take even the minimum level of interest in following our pretty simple instructions to join us. And, and sometimes we get people that will say things like, I did research about your company. I called um, a family member who had bought a car from you. I spent an hour and a half on your website and will identify the things in our company values or the, the, the approach we take to culture or, or our sales model. They'll actually call those out and, and identify them as reasons for applying. And that person rises to the top of the pile. Right. Even if they don't have the experience that that you would hope that they would. Like if we'll take a college grad that's never sold anything, um, who would who would send us a cover letter like that compared to someone who's been selling cars for 15 years, you know, probably the wrong way at the risk of importing bad habits to our company. So anyway, to, to finally get to the the specific question you asked, when we receive that cover letter and resume, we respond with a list of frequently asked questions. This list on my website too, you can see exactly what what we send back that has all this information, what the process is like, who you'll be meeting with, how many interviews there are, what we expect you to do. It has our mission statement as a company. It talks about the compensation, some detail about the pay plan, the hours involved. And again, we want that candidate to be a partner with us in this process. And the more we can educate the candidate up front, the less likely we are to, to have to spend a lot of effort later explaining all this stuff and the less risk there is that the person ends up quitting because they didn't really know what they were getting themselves into. Yeah. I think this is tremendous. And um, all of that to, to suggest also for those listening that this um, demonstrates up front that they are about to enter a growth environment, an environment by which leadership is concerned about their growth. And if like, if you've taken the time to detail to this extent, what the hiring process is going to look like for them, and they don't even work for you yet. Imagine the signals that that is sending to the candidate about what they can expect post hiring that you are concerned about their growth, that there will be milestones and goals that you collectively work on. You, you use the word partner a couple of times and I pick up on that, which is vastly different than employee, uh, team member. No, you're, you're a partner here. And, and I think that just, it, that sends a signal of itself that while you will work within this environment, we are encouraging you to be the CEO of your life. Sure enough. I think there's so much competition for the best people too, that we need every opportunity to differentiate ourselves. And, and for the people listening, you know, they have a responsibility to communicate in every way they can, why someone should work for them instead of responding to the other, gosh, in the Boston area, 25 solicitations for, for salespeople. I mean, it's, it's, it's just competitive out there for talent, even, even uh, during this COVID era where we're talking now with unemployment higher than it was pre-COVID, we're still still trying to, to work. I mean, we really have to work hard to find, find good people. And, and it's hard to say credibly to someone, we care about you as a person joining our company, unless you can find a way to really communicate it in terms of how you're treating them. Mm. How does, um, I've learned that, I mean, we're talking about hiring, but I'm taking notes about leadership here. Um, recently a, a friend of mine reached out and said, and this was on LinkedIn and they asked me in a direct message, what my opinions were about how to determine if the leadership at an organization is worth following before even going through the trouble of applying to work there. They were looking at making a career shift and they asked me, who I believe so deeply in leaders, leadership, and I believe that the best way perhaps to determine if a leader is worth following is because they don't create followers, they create more leaders, right? Um, and so that was my opinion, but, but everything that you're talking about here is a testament to leadership. Why would I even 
care about creating a hiring process. This is one of those things that it's like, ah, just turn on the turn on the the ads and let's see who we get. And then we got to get five salespeople on the floor. So let's get that. And we got to do this. And now we got to make up for it. And then we don't do training and we don't do anything like this is a leadership thing. In my opinion, it's also a culture thing. But circling back to something you said earlier, Jeff, which has fascinated me for quite some time is the fact that I can't see on a PNL the effect of a good culture um, in my workplace. I can see that employee A earns 65,000 a year. What I don't see is the cause and the, the cause and effect of them being unhappy with where they work or being happy with where they work. But we know that that does definitely factor. For example, I, I saw, I, I had someone on the show, Kate Bosch, who believes in creating happy work environments. And she speaks to the, to the importance of creating a culture of, uh, or creating an environment whereby employees can be happy because it does have a correlation to um, what you talked about, which is profitability. We know that there's a, a multiple on somebody's salary. So for example, uh, I think she said there's a one point a 1.6 multiple on salaries for unhappy employees. So in other words, if they're making 60,000 a year in salary, we know that due to inefficiencies, how slow they are, how on you know, unbought in they are, that that $60,000 employee is actually going to cost you almost 120,000 a year just because it takes them so much longer to do stuff and they're not doing it right and they're making mistakes. But the same is also true if they're happy. You actually decrease that, you know, because you're getting so much more out of that individual. Can you speak to some of the mechanisms you have in place post hire that encourage a healthy work culture or a growth culture? Yeah. You know, as you're, as you're talking, I'm reminded that uh, those words by Bruce Cameron, that not everything that counts can be counted and not everything that can be counted counts. Mm. And I think there are some things in the business that, there we'll call them intangibles that are really important to the success of the business, but are, are just, they're, they're just no metrics set up for them. And I'll give you an example. Um, you know, we have, we're, we're a very well run dealership. I'd like to think, but, but, you know, we're not perfect. And of course, and recently we had a long time technician leave and, during the exit interview, one of the things, it wasn't the only reason he left. He was a great technician and I almost cried when he left because he was such a, such a planet person. But one of the things he said is that he was very neat and tidy and he left for a dealership that had just been renovated. And he said, you know, it just, I just didn't like coming to work every day with everything so messy. Mm. And so we went out in the shop and we looked around my managing partner, Dale and I, and we, we walked around and we're like, wow, you know, this, our facility is, is now about 20 years old. And we did some light renovations to the shop some years ago, but it was just dirty. And so what we've done is we've, um, we're going to replace up to eight feet the, um, you know, from the floor up to eight feet with diamond plate, which is like jewelry to technicians. I mean, that, um, it's going to, when it's all done, it's going to be, um, it's going to be beautiful. We didn't do that for the customers. You know, there are things we do to upgrade our facilities for customers. This wasn't for the customers. And, and we're doing some other renovations. We're adding some lifts and, and um, making the, the facility run better for our technicians because we want to make sure that, that it feels like the major leagues for everybody coming to work every day. And if you're playing for the Boston Red Sox, for instance, you don't go into a dirty locker room. I mean, when you walk into the locker room at Fenway Stadium, I mean, it looks like you're in the major leagues. And that's, that's the kind of facility we want to have for our people and, of course, for our customers, too. So I think it's a million little things. I mean, there, if, if it was just as simple as writing one paragraph about what you have to do to hang on to your best people or to create a healthy culture, it's, it's a million things. It's like I said before with hiring, we, we invite the entire team to meet candidates that are coming in. So that's that's a message from us to our to our team that we care about their opinions. We want to make sure that people don't just show up. And so there there are things like that. I mean, when there when there are issues, we try to re resolve them. 
You know, I mean, it's just, it's, it's a very long list. And I guess culture or leadership, you can think of as like brick walls that it's, it's a million bricks and you can miss a few, but if you miss too many, the wall falls down. Michael Cirillo, and you've been listening to the Dealer Playbook Podcast. If you haven't yet, please click the subscribe button wherever you're listening right now. Leave a rating or review and share it with a colleague. If you're ready to make big changes in your life and career and want to connect with positive, nurturing automotive professionals, join my exclusive DPB Pro community on Facebook. That's where we share information, ideas, and content that isn't shared anywhere else. I can't wait to meet you there. Thanks for listening.